Hi, my name is Kim McMillan, and I want to welcome you to Writers on Writing. My guest today is Maria Leong. I have known Maria since she was 15 or 16, and I'm, I won't tell her age. <laughs> We're going to talk about her very important book, Little Heroes on Bay Street, that discusses domestic violence. The book was published in September 2020. So I, I'd love to, uh, Maria, I'd love you to tell us a little bit about, about the book. And, and I'm just really happy, Maria, that, that I have the chance. It's a very much an honor to interview you about what I consider a very important book. Well, thank you for having me, Kim. And I'm actually very honored because um, I'm a behind the scenes kind of person. So, you know, I don't, I don't do this. I'm not a social media person, but because of the, uh, my book, it's uh, very important for me to get the message out there about domestic violence. Of course, of course. And now what I thought was fascinating is that um, Hannah Yol, a member of Malaysia's parliament, read Little Heroes of Bay Street live on to the people, not, not just to a group of people, but actually to the people of Malaysia. Can you tell us about that and why it was so important for her to read this book live? Yes, um, Hannah Yeo is a very, very well-respected, highly adored member of parliament here. I'm in Malaysia, by the way, for those who don't know. So it's uh, 11.30 in the morning here. Uh, so Hannah, this wonderful person, Hannah Yeo, read my book live on Facebook. And I last I looked, 27,000 views. It got 27,000 views. So I'm very grateful to Hannah and my dear friend Wai Ping for setting that up. Um, she's also passionate about uh, spreading awareness for domestic violence and uh, women and children's issues, you know. Can um, you t tell us a little bit about the book and why it was so important for you to write Little Heroes of Bay Street? So I actually wrote the book 10 years ago but I, uh, and I illustrated Happy Dog myself. So I illustrated the dog who's been my best friend since I was six. And he helped me survive watching my father abuse my mother. And when I was little and this was happening, I thought my family was the only one in the entire world that this was happening to. So it was very scary and I felt very lonely. And it wasn't until I was an adult that I found out that other families had this, you know, had the, uh, the same situation. And more recently, actually maybe 10 years ago when I went to see my gynecologist in the annual checkup, it became a routine question. Have you been abused or ever been abused by a partner? So it, I was really pleased that you know, that they are asking that. And so World Health Organization, who reports that one in every three women worldwide have been abused at one point in their life. So um, I really wanna destigmatize this issue so that people don't think it's, um, oh, it's, it's something that happens to those kind of people, you know, yes. that it happens everywhere, all cultures, all socioeconomic statuses. Yeah. And I, I, um, yeah, so I want to raise awareness for, and especially for the children and, and the mothers, but for the children. So that's why I wrote a children's book. Whereas my sister wrote an adult novel, right? Um, Love Made of Heart, which right. also uh, touched on this subject. I, I think, of both you and your sister are just not only my dearest friends, but the books you're writing are really about, to me, helping community, helping family, and helping people to understand just how prevalent and just how dangerous domestic violence is. And so I really thank you for that. Thank um, you. Yeah. Yeah. Except I wish I had a book like this when I was little. And that's why I wrote it yes. for the children and then for the teachers to be aware because no teacher was ever aware that I was going through all this pain. Right. But to be fair, you know, I didn't act out in school. 
so it's not like you know I brought attention to myself where some children might uh, misbehave or hurt other people I, I was very quiet but I was peeling my cuticles till they were raw and bloody and I had uh, I was I had rashes all over because you know the nervousness right uh, and but nobody picked up on that so I'm hoping that th through this book that every teacher will get a copy and, and school counselors school nurses so that they can be aware and look out for signs and, and reach out to these children. Very important. Now the book is in um, English as well as, uh, uh, is it Mandarin? Um, it's in Chinese, simplified characters. Okay. So thanks for that great question, Kim. Um, in China, everybody reads the same characters, the same Chinese characters. Spoken though is, all over the place. You know, there's Cantonese we know of because there's so many immigrants from Hong Kong and Guangdong province in, in the US. Um, so Cantonese is a spoken dialect, but everybody reads the same characters. But my book is in Simplified and I will publish one in the traditional characters because most uh, people in the Bay Area that I'm aware of, the Chinese community read the traditional characters. Which, are, which is actually harder. But now in China, it's the simplified Chinese characters, which is what I learned in school. I just, yeah. I, I, I just am so in awe that you had the courage to do this and that you are using language to teach. And as I said, did you, when, when, when it was, your book was read in Malaysia's parliament, did you get any feedback from people about just how important this book is to helping people identify and speak about child abu abuse, particularly happened to kids? I don't know about the audience. I mean, there were, you know, comments on Facebook saying, we love the book. My children loved listening to the book, but I do not know if, uh, people in domestic violence situations reached out and, you know, called the hotlines, which was thank, my goal, thank, right? Yes, and, and thank you for mentioning that because <clears throat> the, the book has the hotlines. Mm -hmm. the, the book has places where you can go if you or your child are experiencing domestic abuse. And when I looked at that, and that they're in English, there are places you can go, it, it, it's an 800 number, but also in Malaysia. So I, I thought that was so important. And tell me, how did you figure out where you, what numbers or wh the whole process of putting that in a book, which was uh, just, I just loved it. So what, what made you decide on the numbers that you chose and the places that you chose? Oh, well, Google, you know, I, <laughs> I just used Google. <laughs> no, that's um, fine, that's fine. But you know, uh, unfortunately some of the, the websites printed in my book are obsolete or okay. uh, like horizons, safe horizons is .org and I print it .com. So if you go to my website, mariagawa.com, M-A-R-I-A-K-A-W-A-H.com, it will have the correct phone numbers and websites. Uh, thanks to my friend, Jamie Ong for updating those. Beautiful. Yeah, so, you know, things do change, right? Um, right. Phone numbers and websites change. So thanks to the internet, you can actually Google anything and find uh, phone numbers and websites to reach out for help. Yeah. And the hotlines are fantastic um, because it says if you call, it will be safe from if you're a violent partner, he won't be able to trace it or find out on your phone that you called. That's fantastic, you know, what technology is capable of. Uh, uh, definitely, and that is good news for particularly for people experiencing domestic violence. Mm -hmm. Now, you also had a note in the book letting teachers and school guidance counselors know that the book is, is important. And if you notice a child might be experiencing violence in the home to um, somehow start a conversation can you tell us about what, what do you think, uh, how, how, how would you deal with that? Because you told me that 
because of, of your ability to just kind of hide, you never had that conversation with um, a teacher or a guidance counselor. But, mm -hmm. but tell me some of the things that you would pick up on if you were a teacher or a guidance counselor that might be helpful. Yes. Um, so, um, I have a dear friend, Natalie, who is teaching in the public school system in San Francisco. And she invited me into her class to read the book. And she did have a child in the situation. So it was really powerful. Um, some teachers, I would hope that all teachers would care enough, you know, to, to look out to see if the child is acting differently in any way, right. right? Not just like I was peeling my fingers and chewing on the cuticles. Some children uh, bite their nails. Um, um, some children might act out and hurt other children because they're, they're mimicking the violence at home. So, but that's, that's more, uh, that's easy to identify, right? right. Um, so in my book, I list a few. And um, so what you do is you, you refer the child to the school counselor, right? Because a teacher can talk to the child, but school counselor has more professional training to, to deal with these kind of uh, sensitive yes. issues. Yes. Yeah. So I just was introduced to a song recently called uh, Concrete Angels by Martina McBride. And it's about a child who was abused. So actually I want to say, children of domestic violence are not necessarily physically abused. In fact, I think most of them are not. But when you witness your father or mother being abused, it's, it's psychologically and emotionally abusive. So, um, so in this video, the song video, the teacher noticed the marks on the child's arms because the mom squeezed her so hard, but the child, uh, the teacher chose to ignore it. And that was so painful to watch. And I'm, there are teachers who might do that because to be honest, then they have to fill out a lot of paperwork. They might have to go to court to you know, testify, but that is not a good reason to not make a move, right? Right. And uh, teachers by law should be reporting it if they see any kind of abuse. Now, I should say that you um, started teaching, was it in China or earlier? I started in preschools in San Francisco. Okay. And then I taught in an international school in China and then now in Malaysia. Yes. Did in, in your um, work as a teacher, did you, did you find, um, did you have uh, any students that, that you had to report that were, had been abused? That's an excellent question, Kim. Thank you for asking that. Uh, I had one in Menlo Park, an affluent suburb of San Francisco, very affluent. Mm -hmm. And uh, the mom came to school with a black eye, but I talked to my co-teacher about it and she said oh no i don't think that would happen to that family you know because it's there's that was 25 years ago though so we, they still look at it as it's something that happens to those kind of people you know maybe uneducated maybe uh ethnic people so she said no that would never happen and i'm not going to approach them up but i said i feel i need to and she said you go ahead but i'm not going to support that, right? right? So it's a sad thing that the, the mom, you know, gave in, a, she said, I walked into the door or something. And she said, my husband would never do something like that to me. Uh, so she denied it. I don't know, it might have been an accident, right? I don't know that to this day. But the first response is to be defensive that, no, that's not what happened. And then another family was in Inter the international school in mm -hmm. China, they were American. And uh, again, the mom said, no, we're not that kind of family. It's always not that kind of family. And that's what I'm trying to, uh, to erase that kind of mentality it, that it only happens to those kind of people because it ha can happen to anybody. Mm -hmm. And uh, she, she said, Oh, basically she denied it, but it was the child that was telling me that it was happening. So oh. this was, you know, more proof than the previous one. Well, the other one was a black eye, but this child was saying what she saw at home. But 
to the credit of this family, the mother and father uh, went to see counseling, which I didn't know until years later because it was confidential, right? So I'm so pleased that they did seek counseling. Yeah. So it's, it's not an easy thing. That's what I'm trying to say. It's not an easy thing for a teacher to approach the parents because you feel ashamed. Like I felt ashamed when I was abused because I thought people are going to say, oh, well, she must be stupid or uneducated or she brought it on herself. You know, or there's so many things people could say. So um, you have to be brave and, and actually confront the people, right? So that they can seek help. Uh, I've lost your audio, Kim. I had it okay. all, sorry. Okay. Um, I also wanted to, to talk about um, the, 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 you had a, a child or a young person do the illustrations. You had two illustrators for um, yeah. Little Heroes of Bay Street. Can, can you talk about that? Because that's, I just, I love that. My first uh, plan was to have one of my kindergarten students draw or illustrate the entire book so that it would be very child friendly. But then, then I realized, okay, it, a five-year-old can't really do it. She tried, but in every illustration, I looked completely different. Right, one picture I had brown hair, one picture I had blonde hair, one I was tall and skinny, and one I was, you know, stumpy. <laughs> so I thought, okay, uh, I still want to honor her hard work because she did illustrate all the pages initially. And some of her work is shown as Mia's drawings on the wall in the book. And there are some pages that are Marin's actual drawings, the whole page. And you can tell when it's a child's drawing. Right. So Marin, she's in Norway. Hi, Marin. Um, drew the children's illustrations. And Sandra Chavez, the teenager, drew Mia because I cannot draw people. And she is an amazing, talented, gifted young woman. Yeah. I love the drawing where she did Mia scared under the blankets and her hair is all over. And you could just see her eyes. Yeah. Powerful. So those are my two illustrators. And myself, I drew Happy Dog. And as multimedia, I drew the backgrounds with, you know, uh, uh, so I drew Happy Dog with oil pastels, but as multimedia, I love using recycled papers to do artwork. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, well, uh, tell us about the history of Happy Dog because I just think that it's so, it, it ha happy dog. I love the drawings of happy dog. First of all. Yeah. I just, I, I love happy dog. <laughs> so, so tell you, us, we love you too. Yeah. <laughs> you happy dog. Thank you. Maria. <laughs> so, so uh, how did you get happy dog and mm -hmm. um, how long have you had happy dog? Okay. If I tell you how long I've had him, then I think it will give away my age. People <laughs> <laughs> will say you've had him a long time. <laughs> he is antique, truly antique, because I read somewhere something is, if something's 25 years old or older, it's antique. Aww. So I had a Snoopy when I was younger, but um, every time my mom washed him, his stuffing kept falling out. And my mom got tired of seeing all that stuffing all over the house. So she tossed him in the garbage. It was traumatic. Yes, I. my dad took me out to Chinatown to get some baozis, you know, the little buns, because they knew I love it. But I call them, I, thought, I call them conspiracy buns now because they took me out of the house so that my mom could throw away my Snoopy. So I came home and Snoopy's in the kitchen trash can with the legs dangling out. So I don't know what happened after that, but I must've been traumatized. And so they knew I needed a replacement. And my dear brother Vitus, who's in heaven now, he was 10, I think at the time. So I think he felt embarrassed to ask for stuffed animals at his age, because I think he probably would have loved having happy dog. Uh, so for his birthday, he asked that I get happy dog as a replacement. And he was at the store across the street. I lived on Bay Street and that's why the title. Uh, across from the North Point Shopping Mall. And there was a store called Akron at that time. And he was on the top shelf, only one of a kind, no tags. You know how every stuffed animal has a tag made in China and he has nothing. So I think he's 
you know, alien from somewhere. <laughs> and so he was sitting on the top shelf already kind of tattered because other people had played with him and like his arm already needed sewing. Yeah. And Chandra, a dear friend of my sister Teresa's, uh, gave him, uh, would you say Botox? I don't know. It's a new lip altogether because oh, it was wow. falling off. Yeah. So my brother found him and my sister named him Happy Dog. And my brother named him Mr. Grit. And oh, he replaced my... Snoopy. And he's way better than Snoopy. Oh, my goodness. Yes. I mean, yes. Uh, Happy Dog can dance. And the book. Tell and us sing. about some of it. Yeah. And <laughs> sing. And he's always there. Uh, that's what I really loved about the book, that when you were sad, when you had witnessed something that was very painful between um, your parents, you know, he would curl mm -hmm. up with you and, and be your protector. And yes. You so that. Yeah. children need something to help them feel safe, especially when they feel so unsafe. Yeah. And it doesn't make sense when you see your mother's tooth getting knocked out, those kind of horrible yeah. things. Um, and, you know, I do know some people that think, no, that's for babies. You, you need to grow out of stuffed animals. But if you look at Winnie the Pooh and yeah. Calvin and Hobbes, how many grown-ups love them? And how many generations have they survived? Yes. And it is because of a stuffed animal that a grown-up wrote about, right? Wow. That was dear to them. Yes. So um, I'm, I, I have to admit that some people, maybe I didn't publish the book till now because I wrote it 10 years ago because I felt, one, ashamed that I grew up in a family with violence, right? And that I also experienced it myself and then people might think that I'm childish because I still cherish my childhood toy you know but um no now I'm old enough to realize I don't care what other people think one and two um it's a healthy thing for children to have somebody or something to make them feel safe and to go to their happy place yes yes, right? yes. And, and I agree I mean I I know quite a few adults with stuffed animals. And I just think sometimes we need things that help us, I don't know, help us through the night um, mm -hmm. or there for us, or we've, we've, we've endowed them with, with um, these, uh, to, to, they, we've, we've created them, we've created safe spaces through these um, stuffed animals. Mm -hmm. And I, I completely agree with, there is no reason for you to be ashamed because I love happy dog. I, I yeah, just, we love you. Yeah. Oh my <laughs> God. <laughs> Thank you. Happy dog. <laughs> um, I, I just feel that, that he's perfect. And he really yeah. does spread happiness. He, he does. does. He does. Because I do bring him into my classroom every year. I stopped in recent years because like I said, the mouth had, uh, one child grabbed the mouth and it was hanging by a thread, literally. Uh, <gasps> so um, thanks to Chandra. Look, he looks brand new. Oh, right? he looks wonderful. Would you mind opening the book and showing the picture where Happy Dog dances? Because I just okay. love that the idea of the <laughs> illustrations and that they were created by a young person as well as an, an, uh, you know, a, a, an illustrator and, and, and you as well. They're beautiful. Oh, so by the way, this this one was the one by my kindergartner, former kindergartner. Oh, She's now a teenager. Oh, I love and, that. And uh, this one she drew, right? The, me yelling. That was the only outward sign yeah. that I recall that, you know, because I was yelling at my friends, but uh, the teacher didn't notice that. Uh, this is the one that I love that Sandra Chavez, their teenager, drew. Right. Oh, yes. When you were under the covers. Yeah. I so that's that. powerful. And um, the one that you're mentioning. He, da he dances and he sings. Yes. Oh, uh, oh, happy dog is beautiful. He's hanging out of a cable car. Yes, yes. I love that. 
<laughs> I, I'm just curious, did you take them sometimes out in public? Did you ever take a happy dog out in public? Only once, and that was written in the book. It was only once. Yes, 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 I remember. Yeah, but some mean girl said, that's not a doll. Because it, you had a stroller. In, in a baby carriage. And yeah. Yeah. Bless my mother's heart. She let me bring that stroller to Chinatown. And you know how crowded Chinatown is? Oh, God, yes, yes. Oh. And we walked there, you know, so it's a long way to push a little children's stroller. I, rem I, I remember your mother. She was extraordinarily beautiful. Yes, Rita. And, and just, uh, just I, I had great admi ad admiration for it. Very, oh, there's, very there's my mother when um, she died of breast cancer in 2000 and there's happy dog yes, yes. so she, she, that was 1999 she's beautiful yeah yes. powerful and she's a powerful guardian angel now oh i definitely think of, of your mother as a guardian angel i remember Teresa, your sister and i would go out and she would say i gotta get mom to give me a parking space because it was san francisco yes. and sure enough like within a minute or yeah. two we had a parking space yeah so yeah, she was a yeah. Definite... i was not a believer before you know about <laughs> mom's uh powers but when Teresa just just name any place in san francisco we will drive there now just name it on the spot and we okay i said oh there's a gift shop on grant avenue in chinatown right, right. okay we get went there there was a space right in front. And then I said, okay, let's go to North Beach Pizza because that's also Upper Grant, also very touristy. There was a parking space right in front of North Beach Pizza. So it was no, it was not coincidence every single time, every I, single I, time. I agree. Uh, and with, Teresa only got that parking karma after my mother went to heaven. I remember we, we would drive around everywhere yeah. trying to get parking spaces. Right. People who live in San Francisco know that parking is very difficult. Yes, and and yeah. your mother definitely is a guardian angel, definitely a guardian guardian angel. Um, yes. The other thing I, I wanted to ask about is um, how much of the book is what actually happened to you? Because as we're talking, so much of it seems like it was you incorporated your life mm -hmm. inside the book. Is it about um, eighty percent or ninety percent? things that have actually happened to you? Ah, oh, that is such a great question. Yes, you're right. It's it's uh, based on true story, yeah. but some of it is fiction. So true would be me uh, doing the jump rope, you know, and Happy Dogs watching. Right. Uh, I did not bring him to Swenson's ice cream in a backpack because like I said, after the stroller incident, I didn't bring him on him. You know, he's just too big and Come, I shouldn't say cumbersome, but <laughs> you know, it would be that. not, it would not be easy to carry him around. And um, so that was fiction, him going to Swenson's, right? But I did go to Swenson's with my mother and she did say banana instead of vanilla because of her accent. And um, uh, for sure, hiding under the bed or under the covers with him. Uh, but what What's was that, fiction? That's a school, the school counselor, Mrs. Chavez. Was that? Like I said there was no teacher that ever noticed anything, and that's why I felt the book is was needed. Yeah. Because I don't know of such a book. You know, there there is another great book, um, Mommy's Black Eye. Yeah. Uh, which is great, but it's a it's a bear, right? Right. The characters are bears, like teddy bears, cartoon. So I wanted real people, right, to be in such a book. You know, and it is a difficult topic. Very and different. I'm sure some teachers, you know, because some friends didn't respond at all about my publishing this book. And I'm very curious why. I don't know why. Unless they think, what a depressing book. Why would anybody want to buy it? But um, it has a happy ending. Yes. And it's for children to, who are in the situation. I'm not trying to, to tell, oh, happy children and happy homes should know about all these horrible things that happen in the world. I'm not saying that, you know. Because I know some parents and some teachers believe little children don't need to know about all the horrible things in the world. And I understand that. But if it's a friend in the classroom, you want to help that friend, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So uh, um, so there was no teacher. Miss Miss Chavez in the book is my teenage illustrator. I told her, why don't you make yourself the teacher? Oh. Yeah. So she drew herself. Really? I don't know if you. Yes. 
So in the in the scene where she's talking, that is Sandra. Oh wow! I, I love right? that scene. I so and this is my fourth grade teacher who I'm who was real. I loved her, but she didn't see any signs. But she was a wonderful teacher anyway. Wow. And uh, but now she's passed away, and I didn't get a chance to tell her that I became a teacher. You know, and that's my friend Mahiar, who is uh, a provost at University of. New Orleans, and um, he has published several non uh, several novels, and he does nonfiction work for his work. But, yeah, if, so all these inspirational people in my life. I found your book so inspirational. I I loved it. I Thank I you. I was so glad. It was so important, um, and I felt it was healing for you. Um, just just pouring out that experience with the knowledge that it could help another uh, person. And I thought that was beautiful. Kim, you are so amazing. I'm so glad you mentioned the word healing. I haven't used that word. And that is exactly what it should be. Not, it was not just for myself, but for children and the mothers out there. And I, and I know men get abused too, but you know, what happened was I saw my mother getting abused. Yes. And um, so, yeah, and Johnny Depp is in the news lately. He's been abused by his, you know, that <laughs> crazy well, you know, wife of his. So he's so sweet. He didn't lay a hand on her, right? And who would ever imagine he's that he could be abused, right? He and he's tall, but it can happen that women abuse men, or and also in gay relationships. So it's just well, that that's not what happened to me, and so that's what my book is focused on the mother getting abused. Yeah, but, it, 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 yeah. It, abuse has no sex or it, it, uh, abuse is abuse. It's when people uh, have issues within themselves and mm -hmm. so they, they take it out on others. Yeah. And so, so I really, uh, if, if I can reach as many children as possible and help them heal, because when children uh, witness violence at, at a young age, it is very true that the, if it's a boy, he will become an abuser. If it's a girl, she will be abused. And in my family, that vicious cycle was proven, right? My sister was in an abusive relationship. I was in an abusive relationship. My brother abused both his wives. And we didn't deserve that, yeah. you know? That shouldn't have happened. But um, thanks to counseling, you know, my sister sought counseling. So then I sought counseling and we realized we don't need to live this kind of life. Yes. You know, we need to value ourselves. Sadly, my brother didn't seek counseling, but uh, he, you know, he was a beautiful person and he suffered yes. because of our upbringing. And my father, um, you know, so to educate people about domestic violence it could be a situational thing so for my father i think it was situational you know that it was a stressful situation and he took it out on my mother and for other people it could be alcoholism yes. it could be uh, mental illness or it could be generational so like for my brother it was generational right but did, i have uh -huh. i was did yeah. you get to make peace because i know how much you and Teresa loved your father did both mm -hmm. of you get to make peace be, with him before he passed oh definitely way before that yes, yes. we realized that he both our parents did their best yes. you know um and interestingly interestingly when i was growing up when i was little i blamed my mother you know i thought she brought it on herself right and people do think that yes. did and people will say oh you know, maybe she deserved it. Maybe she was giving him lip, you know, that kind of stuff. But no matter what, you have control. You don't hit another human being, right? You go, you know, like their counselors teach little children. If you're angry, count to 10 slowly, do deep breathing, walk away. So now counselors teach children all these methods to cope with anger, which is fantastic. That's beautiful, and and I, I'm a true believer in counseling. I, I mm -hmm. do believe that we all have the ability, no matter what age, to change for the better. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Do you have any words or anything you'd like to say about your book before we, we end the interview? Because I, you know, how much I love your work and I just want people to pick it up and particularly learn about your life and also learn about wh what you can do with regards to uh, domestic violence or violence of any kind. So the final, the most important thing is if you are a child and you're in the home, and I say it in the book, that they need to tell their teacher or the school counselor or the school nurse or whoever you trust to tell them. And it's not getting your parents in trouble, right? So I didn't tell anybody because I thought I would get my parents in trouble, but it's not. It's getting help very clearly, very strongly. I want that message to go out to the children that they need to get help. Mm -hmm. And it's not going to be easy. You know, even though if the mom goes to get help or she goes to a, a battered women's shelter, mm -hmm. it's very difficult to maybe um, um, to support herself, right, financially. Mm -hmm. Or she loves her husband and, or, or you want your children to have a dad, right? So there's all these reasons to stay. And I understand that. But it is important to find help. So, you know, it's, it's not an easy process unfortunately. So the mom might leave, but she'll, she might go back. Yes. Right. But at least start the first step. And, um, and for other people, the general public to be aware that domestic violence is everywhere and affects everybody. Yes. Yes. It's now, not, do you, can you give your um, website again? So oh, that yes, people you. can know more about your work? Mm -hmm. www m a r i a k a w a h dot com so that's my name maria gawa Ch beautiful. my chinese name is gawa in beautiful. cantonese be beautiful and so also you can pick up little heroes of bay street at amazon.com yes. and they can they also um, purchase from your site there's a link right yes and uh you can get it through um uh, book depository is that right I'm so not uh, that's all right yeah book depository <laughs> uh, Barnes and Nobles if you just punch it up online you know you will find it because I I noticed uh, an Australian uh, online bookstore that carries it and Excellent. yeah but with the internet it's fantastic I, yeah. I I'm just glad that when I saw the book out I was so proud of you Maria I just oh. I just I just adore you and I'm just so happy that you're doing Thank so you. much for the world because i Thank do you. believe helping people with overcome issues is one of the greatest things um, in service to others and so thank you for being so much in service to others and during lockdown uh domestic violence has skyrocketed i wanted to say that and so maybe that's the reason i haven't published the book 10 years ago maybe it was meant to be to happen now and so please reach out to people because it's scary for everybody this pandemic right there's there's fear there's hatred it, it's a scary time so yeah. um yeah thank you so please help the families out there now thank you and and thank you all for listening to writers on writing and having my wonderful guest maria here today thank um, you everybody thank you thank take you. care bye love you Bye.